Hello YouTube, welcome back to another edition of Man Cave Astronomy. Um, last night, uh, September the 5th, we uh, took our mount out, set it up, and we put our 4.5 inch uh, meat SN scope in it. And we did some checking on the polar alignment and doing some slewing and, and some different things with the smaller scope. Um, just to kind of re-verify that we were getting the correct polar alignment. Um, to start with and that some of the other previous videos were kind of more accurate as far as what I've put on um, and everything else just kind of verify you know you always want to go back after you you've made some things and done some stuff just to re-verify some stuff and um, I'm gonna tell you last night um, you know with, with what you've seen in some of the previous videos where we made the spots on the, the concrete pad and um, and I took the, the mount out, set the mount down, lined up my dots. Um, it took me about 10 minutes to get this thing um, dead on. Um, as far as the polar alignment went, you know, I got my app on my phone, plugged it up, um, you know, checked and see where Polaris was, where its peak was at, set my, uh, my setting rings. And uh, Polaris, I mean, it, it really, it, I didn't have to change the scope very much at all or the mount very much at all to get Polaris centered up. Uh, once we done that, we stuck the scope on and uh, did our, our two-star alignment. Um, and, you know, the scope, you know, was, was pretty much dead on the targets. I had to do a little fine-tuning um, as far as, you know, getting the, the objects dead centered in the, in the viewfinder or in the, the eyepiece. And, uh, you know, once we did that, I did some other slewing to, to several other objects, um, Andromeda, um, you know, Vega, Star Vega, and, you know, several other different things that I checked out. And, uh, you know, the scope was pretty dead on as far as us getting the mount set up correctly. So that kind of re-verified that um, the polar alignment setup that we're doing is correct. Um, you know just uh, some of the other little, little tweaks and little little tricks that we've you know that I've showed you has really helped out the setup process like I said about 15 minutes I had this thing set up and ready to go and you know about 10 minutes I had the alignment process done and I was actually slewing around to, to all kinds of different objects and it was it was locking in pretty good um, with the four and a half inch on there and um, you know, just just really just to kind of re reiterate that, you know, the process that we're doing is is working. You know, this thing was was pretty dead on. One of the issues that I did run across, and I, I looked here in the the wonderful handbook that come with it. Um, one of the things that I did run into that was an issue, and I think this is probably one of the major issues that I was running into before that I wanted to share with you um, in this video was. Um, I did change the longitude and latitude settings in the hand controller um, to the exact settings on the Polar Finder app on my phone. Um, I think I plugged in those coordinates off of the, the, the compass app that I had and I ended up changing those to the Polar Finder um, settings that they were showing at the bottom of the, the app screen and I also changed the I got scrolling through some of the sub menus um because I wasn't quite getting just right on the objects um so I just wanted to do a little OCD kicking in just wanted to try to figure out exactly what was going on the other thing I did do was I set the time zone to zero um it was at zero five point zero time zone setting so I set that to zero um, I don't know really why they ask you for a, a time zone um, considering we plug the time in um, you know at the startup of the you know when you turn the power on to the scope <coughs> excuse me and um, you know I, if you got the coordinate set in and you got the the time you plug your time in, I don't really see why you need to put the, the time zone in. I mean, you'd think this thing can pick objects out of the sky. It should be able to tell what time zone you're in by your coordinates. But anyway, um, that was one of the little issues too. And, I, and like I said, I just changed, changed it to a zero time zone setting. 
um, and that seemed to help out quite a bit. The other thing that I ran into, and I wasn't really up to snuff on the, the you know, daylight savings time, yes or no. Um, I, had, I, I did a little little checking while I was out last night, you know, off my phone and, and got a definition of what the time zone, you know, um, while I was looking at, I was looking for the time zones to try to plug that in to see if that would help, and I couldn't really ever come up with anything there, um, which the manual doesn't have a description on it either that I can find. Um, and I didn't read all 82 pages of it again at night just to see, but, um, but turning the time zone back to zero and daylight savings time is, um, from April, I'm trying to remember what I seen last night, from April to the first Sunday in November, I think, um, is the definition. We are not observing daylight savings time. Um, I'm trying to run that back through my head one more time to make sure I'm telling you correctly. You pick no, we are not observing daylight savings time um, at this point in time. And I'm trying to make sure that's right. Um, I should have checked that again before I started this, but anyway. Um, but anyway, I found an, I went online, Googled it, and uh, it gave me a clear definition of what is daylight savings time and what isn't. And I checked that, and that was one of the errors I was making was I thought daylight savings time was in the winter time where we cut our hours back, and you know we are on daylight save or we're not on daylight savings time during the summertime where the hours are so much longer. Well, I was thinking of it completely backwards, and that was the issue that I was actually putting the daylight savings time, yes or no, in, putting it in incorrectly. So when we were looking at up at the sky, I guess maybe I was an hour or so off um, on the slew rates, so that was kind of throwing us out. And once I changed all that and was slewing around to several different objects, I mean, this thing was pretty spot on. So... Um, I'll definitely get into probably the next couple of videos I'm going to do is going through some of the hand box setups. Um, we'll plug this thing in, light it up, and uh, you know we'll we'll do some hand box setups and show you kind of what some of the menus are and you know how I got this thing set up to maybe kind of help you because the hand box is pretty it, it, it's pretty simple but it is also confusing because it, it's it is pretty almost too simple with with some of all the technology we got nowadays um but you know we'll, we'll go through some of that stuff and there may be some things on there like i've got um my site location set to home and i need to make sure that um you know when i pick home that i do have the right coordinates plugged in the scope does know where where it's at for the most part and that daylight savings time yes or no um you know as far as everything else that, that we've got going on with the video, I mean, everything is, um, you know, everything's pretty spot on. Like I said, it took me about 10 minutes to, to plop this thing down, put it on my marks, get Polaris right in the in the spot on the viewfinder, um, roll it back to the home position, put the scope on, and turn it on, and, you know, set the date and the time, and get your daylight savings time setting correctly. And, uh, you know, once you do all that, I mean, and, you know, this thing was, this thing was really pretty much close to on the money. You know, the object was, was in the, the eyepiece. It just wasn't centered. And, you know, some of the other things I'm going to start playing with is the, per, the precision correction, um, you know, motor training, um, the train drive, um, deal where it trains the motors to, to kind of help it, um. You know, but the, you know, we're getting, we're starting to get out of the basics and into the more um, finer points of, of the mount now. So, um, one of the other things that I did come across, and I'm about 99% sure, is with the the four and a half inch scope on this mount. Um, with I did have to put one 10 ounce or 10 ounce, 10 pound weight all the way up to the very top of the the weight bar and uh and you know the scope was fairly well in balanced um and i didn't have any issue as far as slewing the scope around um 
with that little bit of weight on there um, as like whenever I've got this thing fully loaded with the, the 10 inch scope with the 30 pounds of counterweight all balanced out really nice on um, you know when this thing does its right extension and declination slew all at the same time you can really hear this this tripod you know really bogging down and part of that isn't the tripod um, I think the biggest problem I think the biggest problem is I've got this universal AC adapter that I'm using that is you know it's it's good I got it set on 12 volts um, you know I got the, the little plug-in uh, little end that fits it um, the problem is though the power output is only 600 milliamps um, which like I said this this tripod the motors and everything um, require 2.5 to 5 amp rating plug-in so and, and if you don't know anything about electricity basically when you start slewing the motors that's where you start drawing all your ampage and basically I think what's happening is we're pulling such a draw that this little AC adapter can't provide is it's actually messing up the the slew rate and the time um, with the declination and the rod extension because I mean you can really see the power um, even in the hand box you know you can see the lights going fairly dim when this thing's slewing around um, especially when you go from a from a far east slew to a to a far west slew um, where it's using it's running both motors and it's really pulling the amps to, to try to run those motors I think that's part of our problem so I definitely got to get a better um, AC adapter um, to give this thing the kind of ampage it needs to have and, um, and I think that was one of our biggest problems is it wasn't an issue last night with the four and a half inch scope which is only six pounds with a, a 10 pound counterweight on there you know we're talking 16 pounds um, you know this thing slewed right around nicely it lined up good and I noticed the, the last time I had the big scope set up with all 30 pounds of counterweight um, that you know it wasn't anywhere in the vicinity of the star I think that's what um, well that's definitely what I was noticing was the you know the, the dim lights and this thing you can really hear it bog down whenever you start slewing both motors so you know this is probably perfect for you know inside setup like what we got here um, you know just plugging it in the wall to fire the thing up and, and you know do all your settings and um, testing and, and things like that I think it's just fine but when you really get all 30 pounds of counterweight and your your 30 pound scope on there and um, you know and actually get out there and, and really start slewing the motors with all the extra weight you know um, I think that's where we're running into a big problem um, so hopefully here within the next week or two I'll be able to get a, a power adapter that is suitable um, with the ampage and stuff. Um, like I said, I've seen them on eBay for about 20 to 30 bucks. I've seen some of the scalpers on there wanting 60 and 70 dollars for them. Um, I think that's just completely outrageous. You can go to Radio Shack or um, any kind of electronic store and, and you can pick one up. Just remember it's got to be 12 volt, 2.5 to 5 amp. Um, you know, if you've got a smaller model of the LXD75, like a 6 inch, you know, anywhere 2 to 3 amp rating would probably be fine. Um, for me, running the 10 inch with the 30 pounds of counterweight, all three counterweights, you know, I'm going to definitely want to probably shoot for about a 5 amp. Um, you know, four to five amp um, setting to help those motors, you know, make sure they've got enough juice to slew this thing. And your balancing really plays a big part in that too. Because I'm going to tell you when, you, when you really set up and do the balancing on this scope and you get everything balanced in real nice, um, you know, it doesn't take anything but two fingers to very slightly push this thing around and, and swing that scope around. And it's, it's really quite amazing. Um, you know how balanced in you can really get this thing and, and you can hear the motors appreciate that but uh but you know like I said everything last night it, it you know the polar alignment was was quick fast and easy and right on spot 
um, from the methods that I showed you in the previous videos. Um, everything else went really good. So, you know, just want to re in, you know reinsert that what we're doing is good. So, continue on.